again, just to kind of beat this in the ground here. We trigger a response to correct. Um, successful, if you have successful compensation, homeostasis is reestablished. If you ever have a homeostatic imbalance where you can't restore optimal conditions, that is usually due to disease, which is an external force working on the body due to a pathogen, or trauma. We have damaged the tissue somehow. So disease or trauma will often lead to a homeostatic imbalance. Um, one of the ways the body in the big picture maintains homeostasis is this idea of mass balance. And this is true really only conceptually in the big picture, that if I, if I am in homeostasis right now and I take on some extra of something, that puts me out of balance, right? So then I have to get rid of that. So there is this gain equals loss. So to stay in balance, gain equals loss. Um, so the, the ways we gain are like this. You either intake it through ingestion or you produce it because of some pathway over here. How do you lose things? You lose things through excretion. Excretion of both of the urinary system and sweat. And you also lose things because you break them down. That's the metabolism part of it. So, so these are balanced in the, the kind of, you know, across the entire body. Um, but it's, it's rarely is it that simple. Well, I guess, it, I guess it is that simple, but what we have to explain are the mechanisms of, of gaining and losing and things like that. Um, so, um, we did the reflex arc. We saw that. We tried to keep things uh, within some, some relative uh, uh, range of optimum, where there's a high limit and a low limit uh, around the set point. Um, and these control systems like we drew on the board over there, what help us maintain that control? Um, let me refresh your memory. Um, the difference between these two reflex arcs here, negative and positive feedback. Um, most of the body's physiology is maintained by negative feedback. And that's where if you have a stimulus, let's say, my blood pressure is too high. In order to get back into that range, the response has to be to lower the blood pressure. So with negative feedback, the stimulus and the response are always in opposite directions. That, that, that seems logical. Uh, if something were too low, the response would be to raise it up. So every bit of physiology, except maybe twice this semester, will always talk about negative feedback. Positive feedback doesn't allow us to stay within a range. Positive feedback would give us more, 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 or less, less, less. So these are in the same direction. The stimulus was something was too high, the response would be to make it even higher. That doesn't make sense over long periods of time, but it might transient, meaning that there are certain parts of physiology where we have these positive feedback loops built in for a particular point of the overall physiology. For example, blood clotting. There's a, a point in, in forming blood clots where uh, platelets start to get sticky. That triggers a chemical reaction that makes them more sticky, more chemical, more sticky, and they just get stickier, 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 stickier until they form a plug, right? And a, and a <coughs> blood clot, and then we're done, right? So it's more, 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 okay, we're done. Okay. The stimulus is gone at that point. It's a very transient. Childbirth is another one. Release a hormone, more contractions, more contractions, more hormone, more hormone, more contractions, until what? The stimulus is gone. Okay, childbirth. So blood, uh, positive feedback is pretty rare. One thing that's interesting, and we'll talk about some of this, you heard of shock, when the body goes into shock. When the body goes into shock is when a classic negative feedback mechanism has somehow been converted to a positive feedback. So my blood pressure drops, and I'm in shock, uh oh, it, my body responds by doing what? Making my blood pressure even lower, which is not good, right? I mean, those things would lead to death. Um, and, and there are reasons why it happens, and we'll get into that uh, in context. So keep in mind, these, this, this whole reflex art thing is kind of what we're basing the entire semester on, is being able to understand that in very, um, specific 
cases of physiology. So this just shows you what it lets us do, right?